concepts. So one way to get your head around it is to think about the units. So what are the units for each of these two things? Anybody have any idea? Pretty good, pretty good. Yep, so what are the units for the two things? Temperature is Kelvin and degrees. Yep, Kelvin or degrees Celsius, yep. And heat is in joules. Okay, so heat is energy effectively, how much energy you need to put into something. And it's the, like Liam said, it's the total amount of energy that's in the, the body that you're dealing with. And temperature is a measure of the average per particle. And it's measured in um, Kelvin or degrees Celsius. So a iceberg has more heat than a red hot needle. Okay, because it's a much, much bigger. So even though each individual particle has not got a lot of temperature or the energy together, there's going to be more than the um, the energy that's going to be in a needle because it's so small. Okay, so that's a really important idea. And what we're looking at is we're looking at some way of figuring out how much heat it takes to change temperature. Okay, so you want to make yourself a cup of coffee, which you'll probably desperately need after this lecture, and you need to heat up your one and a half litres of water from 20 degrees up to 90 degrees. <coughs> how much energy is that going to take? So you can figure out how much the temperature is going to change by, but I want to know in terms of joules. So if I'm going to end up doing enough energy to, you know, sitting on a bike or whatever it is to generate that much energy, I want that in terms of joules. So this is a relationship between heat and temperature. And the formula that we're going to use is Q equals MC delta T is the, is the formula, which I think is probably on one of the handouts you've had. And so we've got three things we're worried about. Q is heat measured in joules. So that's the answer to the question. How much heat does it require is going to be whatever Q comes out to be. M is the mass in kilograms. C is what we call the specific heat capacity. Specific heat capacity. And that's in joules per kilogram per Kelvin. And delta T is change in temperature. And that's in Kelvin. So those are the, the things that you need. The, the fun one is the specific heat capacity, and that depends on the material. So different materials have different specific heat capacities. And you basically need to look those up on a table. It's um, in the formula sheet you get for the exam in this course. It has a, a data table that includes specific heat capacities for whatever it is that you need to know about them. Um, for water, the specific heat capacity is somewhere around the 4,200 mark. So I think 4186 is a number you'll, you'll quite often see quoted. Joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So what that means is that for every kilogram of water that you have, every degree you want to raise it by costs you four kilojoules. That's, that's basically what that's saying. So um, let's have a go at doing an example, and then we'll have a yarn about it. So let's think about the, the, um, the kettle example. So uh, you need to heat, uh, I'll call it... Um, three litres of water from uh, what comes out of the taps, 15 degrees Celsius, probably not a tap in Dunedin, but never mind, uh, not in winter anyway, uh, to 90 degrees Celsius, make your cup of tea, uh, how much heat is required, or how much, let's call it energy. So same idea, how much energy is required. Okay, we're making all sorts of rude assumptions here. We're assuming that 
it's 100 percent efficient so if i if i have 10 kilojoules available that actually all of those 10 kilojoules is going to end up in the water which is always a lie you always lose some because you, know, you heat your kettle up and you know jolly well if you touch the outside of your kettle it's hot so some of the heat's getting out into the environment around it so it's not perfectly insulated but we'll assume that for the moment a um, perfectly insulated setup okay so we're going to use this formula q equals mc delta t so to drive that formula we need to know what mc and delta t is is r there's more than one thing and then we'll be able to whack them into that formula and get an answer so um, what do we got we've got the mass in this case what's the mass going to be we've got three kilograms because one liter of water is a kilogram so the mass is three kgs from that formula specific heat capacity the fact we talked about water is enough to tell us that the specific heat capacity is 4186 joules per kilogram per kelvin and the other thing we need is a change in temperature <coughs> and even though it says kelvin if you're doing a change in you can get away with using celsius because if you increase by one celsius it's the same as increasing by one kelvin yeah but the size of the units is the same it's just the starting points different so in this case you can get away with using celsius because it's a change so the change in temperature is just 90 and 15 so it's going up by 75 and then we use our formula q equals mc delta t three times four one eight six times seventy five equals just just read just read the digits Liam just read the numbers what's that yeah. awesome okay and the units for that is going to be joules because it's an energy isn't it so let's say that's kind of like 942 kilojoules which is a lot it's 900,000 joules that's, that's quite a lot of energy water takes a ridiculous amount of energy to heat up um, if you look on your table for different heat specific heat capacities you'll see water is just way higher than just about anything else it, it's why it's used as a, as a coolant um, it's an excellent coolant because it takes a lot of energy to heat it up at all. So this is the, the process to get a. Uh, okay. Yeah, as long as water, as long as you're working with water, you get a large amount of energy you have to shift around to make it work. Yeah, exactly. So water is very good at cooling things. <coughs>